everyone. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it is a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end during that time. So you can join me for the whole process along the way and just come chit chat and hang out uh, and uh, just share. Uh, so today is day two. We are continuing on the Granny Squares quilt. So this is that quilt. I had been talking about it for probably almost two years and we've gotten it on the schedule now. So we are starting this adorable Granny Squares quilt. It's by Lisa Alexander, and uh, she did it for the magazine All People, or for um, American Patchwork and Quilting. Uh, it's allpeoplequilt.com. Uh, I did put a link to it below if you wanted to check it out. Uh, we chose colors yesterday, so be sure to watch yesterday's post if you're having trouble picking colors for a quilt, or specifically this quilt, but really any quilt. Um, I have some recommendations there. I kind of walked through the whole process right from the beginning. I didn't have any fabrics picked out yet uh, last night, and now, now I do. We kind of centered the products around the idea of the Pantone color of the year for 2020 and the Kona color of the year for 2020, and did what we could with my current stash. So the color of the year for uh, Pantone is kind of like this classic blue. This is my only piece of classic blue, so <laughs> I had to uh, use a different color, but from our trend research that we did yesterday together, we found uh, that all these colors kind of fit together in that current trend. So be sure to check uh, out yesterday's video if you want help uh, with choosing colors. Again, this is the, someone just asked, this is the... Uh, Granny Squares quilt. The link is right below here. You can also go to, oh, I think it's APQ Shop. APQ for American Patchwork and Quilting or All People Quilt. But I think if you go to apqshop.com uh, and then do a search for Granny Squares, it will pop up. But I have a direct link right underneath in this Facebook post. So uh, you can check that out as well. So I'm going to flip you around and we'll look at the colors. I have one little change I'm going to make to it, very minor. Uh, and then uh, we're going to start looking at this pattern and cutting out fabric tonight. And it's going to be a lot of cutting. <laughs> I was reading through the instructions. We're going to be here a while cutting, but it'll be so nice to have that part of the process done right from the get-go. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll take a look at this again. All right, so here are my colors, uh, right where I left them from last night. Um, I might actually just turn them too, so you can see a little bit better. Um, these are just all fabrics that I grabbed from my stash. They're actually all penguin and fish fabrics. That's my other parameter. Um, they're all fabrics that I've made in the past uh, when I was doing fabric design. Uh, but so here's, here's what we're thinking. So I'm going to flip actually into the pattern where we have the full pattern here. So in the pattern, they have all this dark brown, like all the inside borders uh, or sashing. And all of that is this dark brown, dark brown around the edge. I am going to be using this bright jewel toned teal. <laughs> so it looks so good with that little bit of the color of the year that I have here. Uh, this this uh, teal and this blue. I just loved this. So I pulled a bunch of um, other blues that I had in my stash that kind of went with that that um, same color of the year blue in some lights and darks. This has some of that teal. Uh, then the Kona color of the year is very close to this uh, green. It's maybe a little lighter than this. So we put that in and we put a couple other specks of green. You know, we have that green within here. Here's that color of the year, that Pantone color of the year again. 
Uh, and then I wanted a whole lot of light colors. So I'm actually, I'm, I've only pulled three, but I'm actually going to cut a lot from here. So proportionately, it's going to feel like I have a lot of white. Oh, see, look, that changes it already. Um, I'm going to have a lot of white with all of these blues and greens and, and the teal. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my plan. So my little change from yesterday is that I think I'm going to pull out the Anirondack chairs. Um, <laughs> I do love this print. Uh, we got to do something with this at some point. Um, but I thought it's just a little, I don't know if you can tell on here, but it's just a little too creamy. And when I take it out, all of a sudden everything, like the whites look crisper and I just think the whites just look shinier and and cleaner with the teal than when I put this with, I don't know if you, if you guys feel that way, but I mean, I don't know, when I take that out, I just feel like everything just gets a little bit better. <laughs> so that's kind of the challenge. You lay stuff out and then you're like, eh, do I like that? Yes or no? I don't know. So I think I'm going with leaving this out for now. Um, I actually don't know if I have enough fabric here, but we are going to start here uh, and then see where it gets us. <laughs> so that's the plan. So I, for right now, I'm going to just kind of stack all this fabric together. Uh, we'll take a look at the pattern for cutting. Um, you know, I've mentioned before that sometimes I don't cut everything all at once. Sometimes I just cut what I need to get started sewing. <laughs> But in this case, I am going to cut out pretty much all of it. And I'll let you know what I mean uh, in a sec here. Let's just gather all this. I'm going to keep this blue on the top. Or where this wasn't the blue, this blue, the color of the year blue, just to make sure I don't forget about that. All right, I am also using... Um, projects, or sorry, I read the word projects. I'm also using uh, fabric that I have the full length, uh, so the full width, sorry, of the fabric. And uh, by full width, I mean, like here's a bolt of fabric. I mean from one selvage to the other. So it's folded on the bolt. When you undo it, that width is called the width of fabric or W-O-F, you might see it sometimes. I wanted to make sure that I had fabric pieces that were the entire width of fabric, like, like off the bolt is, because that's uh, what the instructions are kind of asking for. So, so this for, oh God, look how pretty that is. Oh, just that, those two. I was saying last night that, that these three together would be like an amazing quilt <laughs> if I had enough fabric. Uh, I just really like that. But so when you unfold this, there, that's that's the width of the fabric. So we want strips that are this entire width, uh, at least in the cutting instructions for, for this. You might be able to use some smaller scraps for some of it, but at least for the background and for these larger squares, you can see like the squares go around. For these two first rows, like this yellow and that gold, you are going to need longer strips. For these other rows, as you get to the inside, you might be able to piece it out, um, like use smaller pieces, but I'm going to go by the instructions and use larger pieces here. So, all right, I'm going to scoot you guys down and uh, let's break into these instructions a little bit. And remember, this is, I do have a post for this or a, um, a link to this, so you can do that. Will you cut for the border strips also? So Joe, that is what I am kind of looking over in making those decisions decisions here. Um, so I mean, you'll get all these instructions when you when you get the pattern. Um, but we do want to start with like 140 strips of the colors. Uh, we'll work on that. Uh, yesterday I, I wanted to start with the colors, but I think I'm going to go back on that. I think I'm going to start with this teal because I'm not positive I have enough. <laughs> uh, it asked for like five and a third yards, 
but again, I just might not have have enough. So I want to just kind of see where that gets me. Um, so they're calling it brown tone on tone. I'm going to just straight cross that out. I, I write on my patterns. If I've printed it out like this from um, just my own printer, I will um, write on them. And I'm just making a mark. I'm calling that teal, just so I don't forget. Um, so these are kind of what the needs are. And then, uh, then we get to the cut fabrics part. So the brown tone on tone, again, I'm just going to call it teal. So if I pick this up later, uh, like if, when we're done this week, uh, we won't work on it again until next month. Uh, so I got to remember, oh yeah, that's my teal. So I thought it would, I thought today I would start to go through what I need to cut out from this teal just to make sure I have enough. And if I don't, I might just throw in some of this other blue and it'll be kind of like patchworky or, or who knows what. I might just have two different blues in the background. We'll see. It might not come to that. Um, but I noticed right away, uh, I noticed right away that the first thing on here was the binding strips. Um, so what the binding is, just if you guys don't know, it is the tiniest little edge. You're not even going to be able to see it here because it's the same color as the background color. It's the little tiniest edge that protects the edge of the fabric. Um, so you're, you're making a, a little strip of fabric that you're covering over that edge and stitching down. And right away, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not sure I want that the teal color. I might want that like a bright white or something, like something to just give it that extra oomph at the end, that extra like framing. Let's see if, I know there's another example in here. Oh no, you can't, you can't really see a binding on there either. But so I might right away decide not to do that from teal. So I'm gonna just mark that off and make a note Cut later, um, you know, decide color later. <laughs> so that's just a little note to myself um, that I haven't done this step. Uh, but I think, you know, strips for inner border. Okay, I think that's probably this. Uh, strips for sashing. So sashing is the borders that go in between blocks. So all, all of these brown stripes right here, like framing, framing all our pretty squares, that's called sashing. So the sashing, so like we have this inner border here, I believe, and that sashing um, strips for outer border. So that must be out here. Uh, sashing rectangles. Strips, squares, rectangles. Man. So I don't actually know what all that is for, but it sounds important. So I will cut that all that stuff out for sure. Uh, I, I think I'm just going to leave off those binding strips. That's kind of my last decision I have to make on this quilt. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do everything but that. So I also, <laughs> I also got a pile of storage bags here. So as I finish, like as I finish these strips for inner border, I am going to make a bag. I'm going to get a bag out and I am going to uh, write strips for inner border <laughs> right on there. And then I will have every part in its own separate bag. Uh, just because right away when you look at this, there are so many different lengths of strips and so many little squares that I, I need um, something to hold it all together. Oh, Catherine says, usually white for binding is not used often because it can get dingy. Oh, that's a good point. You know, another color I really like using that I think frames things is like a really dark color, like a black or something. That could be pretty. But th see, that's the thing with the binding. For me, the binding, I want the quilt finished first and then I can assess what binding color I want. So that's another reason why, why we're gonna wait till the end on that. All right, so let's start cutting some of this stuff up. Um, let's see, so I got, 
I got my ruler out here. I'm gonna actually scooch my smaller fabric out of the way for now. Okay, so here's that pretty teal. Uh, so this is kind of right off the bolt, but I did actually take the bolt cardboard out of here so I could store it a little smaller, um, but it'll roll kind of the same way a bolt will. Um, it's a little wrinkled because I have folded it up. I'm not sure I'm going to iron this beforehand. Some of the other pieces that have been mangled a little bit more, maybe I'll iron, but I think this I'm going to just cut right off of the bolt. Oh, Gretchen says we did the baggies for another quilt and it was a great way for me to be organized. Yes, I, I mean, organization, I mean, really, if you can use your brain for anything, <laughs> uh, like, you don't want to be trying to remember a pile of things while you're working on it. You want it just all there so your brain can be used for other stuff. This is how I feel. So if I can get organized in the upfront, that's good. So, all right, the first thing I'm going to do is cut a nice clean edge here. Uh, I'm lining up, I have the fold on this side. I'm lining up that fold along one of my lines here so that when I unfold it, it should be pretty straight. Um, so I think we'll probably be good to go with whatever we do here. So I'm going to just, since I know we're going to need a lot of this, I'm going to just get a bunch out already. And I do still have the iron if, if I do need to end up ironing something. All right, we'll just toss this back here. All right, I'm going to start by getting that nice uh, edge because this one, you know, it's all frayed. I want to get nice and square. All right, I got my ruler here. I'm just lining it up on the cutting mat here. Ooh, I did not, let's see. Let's see how sharp the blade is. Uh, if this blade is not uh, sharp enough, I will put a new one on so we will have it tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Oh, you know what guys? I'm trying to get into the habit. Trying to get into the habit of wearing a cutting glove and I am gonna do that again tonight. So uh, the cutting glove, this is actually not strictly a cutting glove. It's more for like a kitchen cutting, uh, but it has like rubber nubbins on one side and it's that special fabric that, you know, in theory, can't get sliced through. I don't I find that a little hard to believe, but <laughs> uh, I am trying to get in the habit because I don't, I've seen too many Facebook posts um, <laughs> people slicing through their finger or blah, other other parts of their hand and uh, I don't like it. Um, so the other thing I always do is I always, always, always have the safety on. The only time I take it off is right before I cut and then immediately after I put it on, I never have it open and set it down like that. That is so dangerous in my mind. So always, you know, just getting in that habit. Um, so there we go. All right. Let's get a nice clean edge. Uh, also, ah, cutting is my least favorite part. So I, I am happy that we're kind of getting it all done all at once um, at the beginning here. Oh, you always wear the glove too, uh, Don. All right, what is first? We need seven, two and a quarter. Uh, with the fabric, which is the 42 inches. Okay, so I don't actually have another long ruler here. Uh, so I'm going to, I can either use the mat as my ruler. A lot of people say that's not the thing to do. Um, so just in case, I'm going to get my, get this ruler out too and use it. So what I'm, I'm going to do the double ruler method because I don't want to move this fabric. Um, so what did I say? Two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to line up the two and a quarter along that edge. 
two and a quarter. I better double check. Yep. So I need seven of these. So we'll just go down the line for seven. Yes, please, um, please give updates on all you Aussie folks. You probably don't like me calling, <laughs> me calling you Aussie folks, I suppose. All of you lovely Australian uh, peeps here. Um, let us know what is happening, how everything is going with you. Oh, this is nerve-wracking doing this. I'm gonna get a little higher. Yeah, especially, yeah, no blood, especially, especially uh, in front of me guys. How about that? All right. Ooh. So that didn't cut all the way through, which makes me think this blade is not as sharp as I'd like it to be. So I'm gonna see what some of my other blades are feeling like. I got a couple of these. Um, and then I have a lot of blades at the office. Um, so I'll, I'll switch this blade out um, tomorrow. Oh, you call yourself Aussies too, so that's okay, okay. All right, well, how would you like a non-Aussie to, to, to talk, talk to, uh, to you? What blood call you? <laughs> uh, but on that, I know we talked about this a hair, but I, I, and I, I'm planning it out a little bit more, but we are going to have a koala fundraiser and stitch along here really soon um, on, with Penguin and Fish here. Um, I can't cut and talk. Hold on a sec. So it's actually, oh gosh, yeah, this, this blade isn't the best either. Well, I have one more. We'll give one more a try. And then we're going to have to have a blade changing party. Um, but we are going to have, oh my gosh, Megan, are you serious? <laughs> oh God, that freaks, freaks me out. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I got it all, but I'm assuming you're talking about cutting yourself with the, uh, the rotary cutter. Ah, it's so scary. But yes, so we are going to have a koala stitch along fundraiser coming up here. Um, I'm talking with a woman who runs a an organization, and they are helping out a lot of these smaller shelters that aren't getting the like millions of dollars that are pouring in. So. Um, It'll help like just a lot of these smaller places. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, so I will, I'll be sending an email about that soon, but I have a koala pattern and uh, um, we will be stitching up that pattern and all the um, money from the pattern, the PDF pattern um, will get donated to help the poor little koalas and other animals. So that is, um, again, I'm, I'm planning that out right now, but I do want to have a stitch along and I'm thinking it would be really neat to make it into a quilt as well that we can also um, do, oh gosh, my blades are horrible. A fundraiser where we can make the quilt and then donate the funds from the quilt sale as well. So uh, just stay tuned for that and it'll be in an email probably this week yet, more information. Uh, but I do think the stitch along, that is going to be, um, I figured out a date for that. I think we're going to do it Saturday, what is it, like the 25th or so? Because then it'll be enough time for you guys to get supplies and stuff. But uh, we're going to do like a Saturday stitch along of of this koala pattern, and I think that'll be just kind of nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're getting there. Okay, that one's a little, uh, got a bunch of 
bunch of folds in, but I think we're still fine with it. What was that? One, two, maybe that was only five. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I thought we were done. One, two, three, four, five. I got two more to do. I'm going to have to actually scooch, scooch uh, down a little bit more, I think, to get the last one. Oh, turning the blade around. Mary, I've never done that before. I'll give that a try. Um, I'll flip them tonight and just kind of give it a go. Otherwise, I do have a pile more blades. Ooh, I got to turn a little bit there. Okay, I'm just looking at the... Oh, I better better get the ruler again out for that. Oh, you know, I have these sticky things on the bottom. I bet you it's time to replace those as well, especially before we do all of this cutting. Hold on here. This is a bad idea, probably. Ugh, like I said, cutting. Totally my least favorite part of the quilting process. I know, oh my gosh, and I had that open the whole time. Um, I know for some, they don't mind this part at all. It's just like their ch chill and, and cut mode. Ugh, I'm having like so many cutting issues already. It will go smoother tomorrow with um, some good blades, I promise. And tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we'll get right into cutting right away and get as much done as we can. I'm gonna try to get this last piece out of here. Oh, that's so, oh, that's awesome, um, Noli. So Australia Day is the 26th, so that's perfect because the 25th here, so what I'm thinking is it'll be like in the U.S. or in, you know, in um, Central Standard Time, I think I'm going to do it at 3 p.m. January 25th in the Central Time, which is where I'm at. Uh, which I think translates to like 9 a.m. on the 26th in Melbourne time. So I, I, I was trying to pick a time on a weekend where I thought, you know, if you're from Australia, you could stitch along or the U.S. and not be like totally, totally weird time. So, okay, that's turned out <laughs> kind of fun. All right, I think I got my seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. So, all right, now I need that plastic bag. Where was that? Oh, behind me. Okay, this is um, strips for inner border. Okay, there we go. Well, <laughs> I'm kind of ducking underneath the camera a little bit. <laughs> so it is, it's a hair awkward, but I think the biggest issue, first of all, I haven't cut like this in a while. It feels like we've been sewing. Um, <laughs> we've been finishing up projects, which is amazing. Um, so I haven't feel like I've cut in a while and cutting these long strips like this are always a little bit difficult, but um, I think I will get more. Let me show you them here. Oh yeah, I do have them. So I'm gonna put new True Grip stickers on the back. I could actually probably do that now because uh, I think the ones that I have are pretty worn. Uh, this has been my favorite product to stop a ruler from slipping. And then also I think changing the blades. So we'll, we'll do these two things and then just see the difference uh, tomorrow. 
and really that should be done at the start of every project. Um, <laughs> but that did not happen yet for me. Okay, to the side, you. All right, so then the other thing I like doing, because we're starting to, trying to stay organized here, I am going to check that off. We have done that. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see all those check marks add up and, you know, in case I jump around or if I come back later, I know I have that without having to look through all my little organization stacks. I'll just know. All right, so next up, we need eight two inch strips. So that's for the sashing. Okay. You can go to the side. I think I am gonna put those stickers on real quick here. You can see that I kind of have some, but they're, I mean, I think I just need to wet these down really. Oh, I'm missing them down here. Let's just put new ones. Yeah, I'm missing them at the top and the bottom. So they're just kind of pivoting in the middle. I'm gonna just put new ones at the top and the bottom. But really these, I didn't put a link to them here. I didn't think about it, but, um, oh gosh, do I even have any more? Yeah. These at the top and bottom really help. Okay, how are these done? There we go. So they're just like little silicone stickers and they actually have a little hole with another one in. I don't know if there's a real purpose to that, but I just use, I just use one of each on here. So we'll go one there and one there. I like these on all my rulers and they've just been on for so long that yeah, they're just getting worn away, but they're now now it, yeah, see now it doesn't move at all. I'm actually moving my whole table. And I think I'm gonna exchange these little ones too. Whoop, and the paper with that one. Oh, you like these, uh, these grips too, Gretchen. That's good. Oops, stuck my finger. Okay, yeah, and those again are like these, these true grips, um, and they're the little circles, and I mean, really, they, they have been one of the best things I've used. Okay, next up, so my edge is still fine here. I'm not going to recut that edge. So I'm actually going to go all the way to the edge this time. Again, I'm lining up the fold down here on a rule line, just so that when it's unfolded, it should be square. Versus if I cut it like this, then it would end up being like a V. So we're trying to get as square as possible. Also, I'm always pretty fiddly at this stage here. Get those nice cuts. Oops, I think I hit, hit my head on you guys there. All right, let's, uh, let's cut eight strips out here. So I'm gonna, instead of that square, I'm gonna use this, this uh, other ruler here, just cause it's a little bit longer. Again, I'm using the double ruler method. Otherwise I'd have to rotate all of this and I think this is just kind of nice. Double check the measurement. <laughs> yep, okay, we're fine. Okay, <laughs> I always get so paranoid um, when it comes to cutting the right size and the right amount. Like I really do get nervous. Cutting is not my game, people, I'm telling you. Oh, but this ruler is awesome now, it's totally not moving. Oh, what a difference, I'm telling you. That's, that just really is so helpful. Those those new grip it, or, or uh, not grip it's, what are they called again? True grips. Oh, that was, okay, I'm glad I did that tonight and didn't wait till tomorrow. So different.
Okay. Oh, so much easier. I'm probably pressing a little bit harder too because the ruler is not going to slip. That's not great. Like I don't want to press harder. I should just be able to lightly, I mean, you know, a little pressure, but not, I shouldn't have to lean into, and I'm not that much, but you shouldn't have to lean into your blade. If, if it's not easy for you to cut through like four or five layers of fabric with just a little pressure, it's, it's time to change the blade. And that's definitely where, where I'm at now. Um, it's not horrible yet. Like it could be a jillion times worse, but it, it would, um, benefit me to have a sharper blade for sure. Oh, but those true grips are making all the difference right now. You know, cutting isn't, isn't my favorite thing, but it is going to be so freaking nice to have all these pieces ready to go and I don't have to be like, oh, I didn't cut that out yet I gotta, for this whole next section of the quilt. So I'm going to get my head underneath you guys. <laughs> there we go. We're going to be a little higher here, I think. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm excited for. I'm excited for this to be done, uh, the cutting part. And again, I, you know, yesterday I said I was going to start with all the fun assorted colors, but I decided to um, do this teal first. First of all, because then it will just be out of the way. It's a big chunk of fabric that I don't have to have around anymore. Um, and then, <sighs> I can't talk and cut. But the other thing was that I wasn't, I wasn't um, sure I had enough of this fabric yet. So we're just going through the process and I will have to come up with a solution if we don't have enough. Um, already, uh, if you're just coming in, already I've decided to not cut the binding fabric already. It has, it has measurements and the number of cuts to do the binding, but I'm saving that for the end. I'll, I'll cut that out and make that later. I'm okay with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, two more. I mean, really, we might be cutting for the end of the week here yet. Ugh. <laughs> oh, but wouldn't it be nice when it's done? It's one of these things that I have to learn to love somehow, and I'm not there yet. Pressing, I have learned to love a little bit more um, than, than the cutting, that's for sure. There's so much danger, <laughs> danger of cutting it the wrong size. You know, I'm in an awkward body position. I got a, you know, a blade that can cut off my fingers. Nothing is good in this, this realm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Except for that we get to start seeing, like seeing this turn into a strip of fabric. That's getting me excited for, um, the actual quilt. So there is that. <laughs> Maybe that's how I have to like it. Like, ooh, look at all these strips. We're turning it into something. How fun is that? Maybe that's that's what's gonna. I need that. That way of thinking. We're cutting strips or cutting anything. I think I moved a little bit hair, but oh well. Okay, I think that's what we need. Two, four, six, eight. Ah, perfect. All right. Let's gather these and I'll make a, oh, I keep hitting you guys. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make you lower again. Exactly, Gretchen, what if I want a different color binding? 
uh, like I was saying earlier, with the binding, again, that's that little protective piece of fabric. It's only like a half inch or a quarter inch, half inch wide, um, all the way around the edge of a quilt. Um, I might want that a different color. And I, I, and I like the idea of seeing what the quilt looks like first, seeing the finished quilt, because I don't know what that's going to look like yet. I want to judge the finished quilt before I decide on that color. I mean, it could just be the same color here. That's how, <laughs> who do we appreciate? Yeah. Um, this is the same, this is what they have in the instructions, just to do it the same as the background color. Uh, but I don't know, we'll see. Okay, this was the eight. All right, let's find, maybe we'll do that in, should I do it in thirds? I'm getting picky. Finicky. Must be getting late. <laughs> That's usually when the finickiness comes in there. I did it thirds instead. All right, I'm gonna grab another storage bag. And I, I use these, I use these um, bags again later, but I just wasn't sure I had enough for this whole project, so I, I ended up getting new ones. Oh, Kathy, so I, I haven't seen that email, but Aurafil also has a, a, like a cross stitch of the month program too. So you might be seeing those e emails as well. I think that's different than the Aurafil uh, quilt block of the month. So I, I think that might be something else. I'm not positive, but I think that's, I think that's a different project. I have to look into that more. So we'll be starting the Aurafil quilt block of the month. The Colors of Italy, we'll be starting that the last week, um, the last week in January here. All right, I need my black Sharpie. Oh, here we are. Gosh, I'm in this small space and I'm still losing things. Happens every time. Okay, strips for sashing. Probably writing big and not just in that little little area. Okay, and I'm also going to check that off here. Whew, we're working our way through. So this is our last one that looks like it's the whole length of the fabric, or the width of the fabric, I mean, the 42 inches. So some of these other ones, ooh, some of these other ones we're going to be cutting smaller. So what we'll do there after this will be cross cutting. So what that means is we'll cut, you know, a long 42 inch strip still, but then we'll rotate it and cut it the length that we need. So um, we have one more full length of this though first. After that, we have to do math. <laughs> so let's see, I think we can do, I think we can do this yet tonight. And then tomorrow we'll come in gung ho for cutting and we will finish all this teal and hopefully get on to some of those other colors. That would be great if we could get all of that done. Um, or moved along, all of this teal done. And actually I'm, I'm thinking based on what we've cut already, I, I think we might have plenty of fabric. I guess we'll see once we start cutting the smaller pieces. Okay. All right, these are getting even smaller. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be dealing with small feeling pieces uh, with this quilt. I think it's a done in a way where we don't actually have to deal with a lot of small pieces. One and three quarters. That's, that's what's gonna be the fun part of this quilt, I think. It uses a unique way, or a unique to me way of sewing pieces together. I don't think we're very square anymore. I'm gonna recut this. Um, but yeah, so all those fun little uh, granny square blocks on the inside of the quilt, all our, our, all our blocks, like those diamonds of all the squares. Those are constructed in a pretty interesting way, I think. If you look forward in the pattern, or if you look at the diagrams in the pattern, I haven't done a block like that before, so I, I'm excited to give that a go. So it feels like we're, it feels like the quilt is made up of lots of teeny tiny small pieces, 
but we're doing it in a way where we're actually just putting strips together. And I think that's exciting. Oh, Sharon, if you're just, if any of you guys are just popping in now, we, as of yesterday, have started the, uh, the Granny Squares quilt. Ugh, it's so pretty. I just can't wait to get going on, on these blocks and having them all be kind of a, a variety, all different like that. I think that's great. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting out all this brown here, all the like sashing, all the borders, all that brown. I'm using bright teal <laughs> instead. So uh, that's a little different than, than the pattern. Okay, double check. All right, I think we're good here. So I need seven of these. You know, I should have maybe wrote on those bags how many I, how many pieces should be in there. I think I'm gonna do that when we're done with this bag. Can't hurt knowing how many things, especially once we get um, into like some of the strips because there's like, 30 of one, of 30 of these rectangles, or 26 of these other rectangles. Um, so it'll be good just to have a general idea of how many are in in there. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this teal, and I'm extra excited about how it looks with <laughs> the color, the Pantone. This is like the Pantone color of the year. Ah, those two together, I think, just are so just juicy. I like it. I want to see, I want to see it sewn. All right, I'm gonna have to duck under you guys again. So let's get a little up higher. Oh, Kathy, you're still waiting for your fabrics. Um, well, chances are you'll be able to catch up pretty quickly. I think. So I'm just spending, I'm spending an hour here in the evenings, every evening. If you guys are new here, I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And I'll be working on the Granny Squares quilt. That's what we're working on right now. The first full week of every month. And that is this week. This is our first, we're just starting it. So this is the first full week that uh, we're working on on this. Oop, I'm stuck. I do have like a little nick out of here somewhere. So next week, we'll be putting this on hold until February. And next week, we will be working on the Splendid Sampler 2 project again for the week. And then the week after that, we will be stitching, we'll be embroidering the Mandala Love uh, embroidery, which is our embroidery of the month. Um, I believe I have a link to that too if you wanted to check that out. And then the last week, we will be starting the Orophil, uh, which is the thread company, the Orophil Block of the Month program quilt along as well. So we're starting a whole bunch of projects this year, <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm excited for all of them. And they're actually scheduled out this year. So each week we'll have a different project that we switch between it. And that'll be nice because sometimes it can be fatiguing working on the same project all the time. So by switching it up, I think we'll keep ourselves excited. One, two, three, four, five. I haven't done that in such a structured manner <laughs> as like by week before. So I I'm excited to see how that, that goes for us here. I think we're going to end up just making a lot of progress on, on, on everything. So I think it's going to feel really good actually. All right, ducking under you guys again. 
I went swimming today again. I'm back at the Y again <laughs> after not going since like before Thanksgiving um, or since when Thanksgiving started. So you'd see my swimmer hair again. Okay, was this eight or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, regardless, I still need another one. It's seven. I need seven of these. I feel like I'm slow with cutting, but I think it's just because I'm careful. Like, uh, just the idea of cutting my finger just freaks me out. Very careful. But I think if you're careful at any point, it's the cutting. <laughs> All right, I think I needed seven. Yeah, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. All right, let's collect these. Let me get you guys lower again here. This teal is so pretty. Pretty. This one's a little lumpy, but I'm sure we'll figure that one out. Okay. We'll grab another bag. Yep, slow is good when cutting. I mean, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna leave all of this out tonight so it'll be all ready to go for us tomorrow. We'll just, we'll keep cutting um, on, on these blues, these teals, I mean. All right, marker. Aha. Okay, this is strips for armor border. All right, I'm gonna write seven. Okay, strips for stashing. I already don't remember what that was. All right, eight. And the inner again, was it seven? Yep. Not a two. <laughs> All righty. So it doesn't look like much for the night, but really, I mean, uh, this is where it's at. This is going to get us going for the rest of the quilt and not having to cut later, which would be such a pain. So, um, you know, you could even put, punch a hole in these if you wanted to hang them up. Um, I, I'm just going to leave them flat in the bag here. We'll just make a really big pile and then I'll get like a box or something to put them in. Uh, oh, let's check this off. Okay. So again, so tomorrow, like I said, tonight we did all of the 42 inch ones, which are the width of the fabric. Um, all the next ones are different sizes. So again, what we're going to do for that is we are going to cut the length that we need, or we're going to cut the, the width. So like, for example, these ones are two inches by nine inches. So we'll cut, we'll cut a two inch strip and then we'll cross cut them we'll rotate it and then cut the nine inch strips out of there. So we'll actually have to do math, like how many two inch strips do we need to cut to get the 30, you know? So we'll be doing a lot of that. And then there's a whole lot of one and three quarter bits that we'll just keep cutting until we have all the right size, it looks like. But yeah, so that's the plan for tomorrow. All the little bits. <laughs> so definitely, Sally, a good start for, for this evening, I think. Um, doesn't look like much, but every step counts for sure, and we are going to get further and further. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around, and we will call it an evening here. All right, guys, so thanks again for joining me. Uh, let me show you the pattern again. There we go. So, it is the Granny Squares quilt. So pretty on the chair like that, I think. Uh, let me show you the bigger... Here's the full finished quilt. So we are going to be doing the whole thing. <laughs> so uh, oh, doesn't it look just like a granny square crocheted afghan there? That's what this is supposed to look like. It's supposed to have that uh, feel of a granny square crocheted afghan. Uh, and I think it does. I, it's just so cute. I'm excited for it. But yeah, so we will keep going. I am going straight from the instructions. 
This time around, I don't always do that. I sometimes veer, but we're gonna do all this cutting and then, and then move on after that. So I'm excited. So thank you again, everyone. Uh, if you're not on my email list, be sure to check that out at penguinandfish.com because I will be sending info about the koala fundraiser and stitch along soon. That's just going to be easy and fun and just a great way to uh, raise a little bit of money that we can help out all those koalas and other animals uh, over in Australia. So uh, thanks again and have a great night, you guys. I will get this up on YouTube when we're done. Done here tonight. See you tomorrow, everyone. Good night.